Hello, my friends. I have great news from Skylum. But before I'll tell you the great news, let's just talk a little bit about today's tutorial. I will be editing this photo over here and what we will do, we will do a portrait background remover. I will take you to my tr through my thought process and uh, we'll see how we can fix some of the problems that occurs when you work with a difficult image like this. This is your worst case scenario when your background is so close in color with your subject and we'll see what we can do and how we can solve those problems. Now about Skylum News, um, they watched my video yesterday and they sent me an email today and um, I will just read it to you. It says, I've recently watched your portrait background removal video and noticed that you said Skylum added all the features to Luminar Neo. It's true, but only for new promised uh, features during the pre-order campaign. With the new updates, we will still add the dodge and burn tool and clone stem tool. And that is fantastic news, you guys. For those of you that are hoping so much for that clone stem tool, I feel like the dodge and burn maybe is not so important because we can dodge and burn with other tools that they already have, but clone stem tool sure will be helpful. So that is the great news from Skylum. Another great news is they did give me a code for $10 off. So if you have not purchased your Luminar Neo yet and do want to purchase it, please use the link in my description below. I'll put the code in there too. It's Skylar10 and uh, you can get $10 off. If you are new to this channel or new to Luminar Neo and you want to learn how to use Luminar Neo, I do have a playlist with, I think it has 79 uh, Luminar Neo videos, tutorials so far. And if you go and watch those, that should pretty much teach you everything you need to know about Luminar Neo. I went through every single tool with lots of examples, explain to the best of my ability everything that you need to know on using this program. So enough babbling, let's go to the computer and move on with this tutorial, see how we can successfully remove a background. Here is the image we will work on and I will go to edit and under layer properties you will find your masking and I will go to mask portrait background and remove. Now Luminar Neo did his best to remove the background but we do have some problem areas. We're missing part of the hat over here, part of the hair on this side. We need to clean up a little bit more around this leaf and we are missing a whole chunk over here that we need to clean up. Also, we have this haloing around the hand and there is a way to camouflage haloing. I will show you. Let's just do this really quick. For example, if I choose a very light background, let's choose this one and I'll put it underneath our layer with the person. Now you can see we have the halo ink and it's very apparent because the old background was a lot darker than the new background. So now you have this halo ink happening. Uh, if we choose a different background that is a lot more similar to the old one, let's choose this one for example. And I'm going to put it under my portrait. Now we can still see it, but one trick you can do to camouflage it, if you let's say you really want to work with this background, and you want to make it work and not see the halo ink, what you can do with the background selected, you can go to develop and take the exposure down. And by taking the exposure down, now we are really camouflaging because we made the background the same luminosity as that halo ink, and now it just gets, you know, blended in and you cannot see the halo ink. But this is not going to be the background we are using today. So I'm just going to remove these ones and we will work on our selection. I will go to masking and then under portrait background and remove, we will use our three brushes. We have a transition brush, which is this clear brush that you go around your subject. You have your object brush, which is your subject and then background for selecting the background. With my object tool, I will work on bringing back details around the parts that are missing some details. So I will go something like that. See if we can bring back some of that hair and hat. And there you go. Then, oops, that's really not the subject there, but I will fix that in a second. I want to bring back some of this scarf that is happening here behind the hair. All right. And I want to bring in a little bit more of this hair that we're missing some pieces. And that helped a lot with that. All 
right. I can even go around the hand a little bit. And let's see. That is not bad. Let's go use our background brush now. And this is part of the background. All right, it didn't fix much in there. But then we know this is part of the background. Let's use the transition brush. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and just kind of go between the hair there and the background. And that really did wonders there, worked a lot better. Now we're missing a little bit of hair here, so I'll go to my subject and just paint a little bit. Do not go all the way to the edge because the program is pretty smart on detecting where the edge is. So just go within, you know, a little bit of the edge. So that is looking good. All right. That is great. Now I think this is as close as I will get with this refinement brush. So the next thing I would do is actually go and work with my regular brush masking. So now that we have my regular brush, I will go to erase. I like to keep the softness of my brush for this kind of selections around 20. And now we were just cleaning up a little bit of our selection. I want to remove some of these flyaways. I do not want to remove them all. You do not want to have a completely smooth transition because that just makes it look unnatural. So I'll just do a little bit of cleanup. That looks better. Uh, let's fix around the leaf. I'll go Command Plus to zoom in. Really zoom in. And now we can see what we're doing. We're adjusting the brush to the correct size. And we can really go in and clean up this over here. All right, that is not bad. Now, to fix this haloing around the hand, because that is going to be a little bit of a problem, I will take my brush and let's make it a little bit smaller. I will put it here, hold down a shift, and then I will click on here and we'll make a straight line. You see, we're basically erasing the haloing. We might be losing a couple of pixel or a pixel or two just around the hand, but that is okay because you will not know it. So hold down shift, go down, and there you go. We're just cleaning up a little bit. Make the brush a little bit smaller, get into this corner. All right, we went a little bit too much. I'll go with the paint. There you go. All right, Command-0 to fit to screen. So maybe I can even clean up a little bit more just around this flyaway hairs. Oops, not with paint, I'm sorry, it goes with erase. There you go. Now this part over here might be a little bit too smooth so it gives it away that we cut out the subject. If I was in Photoshop right now I would use a brush that has like a hair brush and just pick one of the colors from the hair and just paint over it just to you know add back some of that natural flyaways. But I think we did a pretty good job with our subject. Maybe I'll erase this flyaway too just a little bit. And now we can bring in our background. For this image, I want to use this background. I will fill it to fill the screen, opacity at 100%, and I will bring it down underneath. And as you can see, we have no haloing around the hand, and everything is looking nice and good. Now, the problem we're having when we do a composite is that our subject doesn't really feel like it belongs into that background. And what I mean by that is that the colors are just a little bit different. So a good practice is after you um, swap a background, you always, always want to color grade your images. And the easiest way to color grading is to add an overlay and change the blending mode to either overlay or soft light or screen, whatever works for your image. So for this image, I want to load a new overlay and I have these PNG files over here. It's just a color background that has a very, very soft, um, soft feathering center where it's clear in the middle. And the reason why these ones are made with no color in the middle is so your subject doesn't get so brown. It's just kind of, you know, gives it like a vignette and just pulls everything together. 
I will show you in a second. So I will select this one, I will open it, now it shows up into my layers, and by double clicking it, it's applying it as a layer. Now I will fill the screen with it and put the opacity at 100%. So when you see at a hundred percent, it still has a little bit of color in the middle, but not so much. And it's more transparent as the sides is very opaque and you cannot see through it. Now the PNG is made. So the more clear part is smack in the middle. So I can adjust it to fit that way, stretch it a little bit. And there you go. And now I just have to change the blending mode from normal to soft light. And by doing so, now everything just kind of gets pulled together and makes sense. I will show you really quick if I hide this. You see, this is before our color grading and this is with color grading. And it makes everything very nice and rich and that autumn, you know, golden tones. And I don't think I would do anything else for this image, really. This is all I would do. I hope this was helpful that you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.